right church. Glory to God, hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews chapter number five this evening. We'll take just a, a minute here. And I'm gonna read you off a little list here tonight. It won't be long. And um, we'll, uh, I'm gonna bring you a truth here. I think most churches need. Uh, I hope you don't need it, but I do hope that you will uh, try to make sure this is not you. Uh, Hebrews chapter number five, and I'm gonna read some scripture here. Uh, when a Christian, when you first get saved, you're compared to a little baby, a little child, like these little babies up here um, a while ago. Now, um, when I, that little one took off here a minute ago and run by here, nobody thought nothing about that. You know why? Because he's only two years old or one or whatever it is. Uh, now, if Jeremy did that and Michelle had to go grab him and make him sit down, we would think something's wrong with him. Something, we think something's wrong with him anyway. But, but, I mean, you'd think, oh, my goodness, that man's 40 years old. He's, he's goo-gooing and ga ga that, That's what I'm going to preach about tonight. You don't stay a baby forever. And if you do, something's wrong with you. Hebrews chapter number 5, and look at verse 13. Hebrews chapter number 5 and verse 13. For everyone that useth milk, like a little child, is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. That word babe, baby, same thing in the Bible. But strong meat belong to them that are full age, even those by, who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. I want to preach tonight on church babies. Church babies. Sometimes I think that being a pastor is almost like being in charge of a humongous nursery and that we're, we're, we, we, we have to deal with people who are grown big physically but have these spiritual and sometimes even, even uh, uh, mentally the, the capacity of a child. And that's a sad thing. There's a verse of scripture in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 where Paul said, when I was a child, I thought as a child. I, I acted like a child. I behaved. You expect a child to act like a child. But he said, when I became a man, I put away childish things. That means when you get 25 or 20 and 30 and 40 and 50, it is time to put your toys down and man up and be a man. The same for a woman. Uh, I, know, I know people in 20, 30, 40 that act and behave like 12 or 10 or 13 year old and churches are filled with them. I feel sorry for a young preacher today starting out pastoring a church. I feel sorry for him. I mean, we're living in the most sensitive, touchy uh, 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 feelings on our shoulder generation of Christians that this world probably has everything, especially right here in America. Uh, you, you, see, uh, uh, you may see a little immaturity in yourself tonight. I guess we all still got some of it. And I'd like for us to uh, challenge you tonight to work on that. Work on whatever area you're being immature in in other words, grow up and quit acting like a baby. Uh, and and, and uh, this is war we're in. This is a battle we're in. This is not spiritual romper room. This is the battle of the Lord. We are in the Lord's army. We are soldiers in God's army. Uh, we are enlisted for life. We're not retiring. We're not, uh, we're not serving our 20 years and quitting and getting out. We're in this thing for the long haul. Amen. I mean, I'm in it for good by the grace of God. I'm in it till I cross the finish line by the grace of God. No quitting, no turning back, no looking back. It's a battlefield, brother, not a recreation room, a fight and not a game. So run if you want to, run if you will, but we came here to stay. And so tonight, with that thought in mind, I'd like to talk to you a little bit uh, about growing up in the Lord. And most Christians stay babies their entire life. It, it really is sad. It, uh, you, you, sometimes you'll see a kid and they'll do something or they'll maybe 
talk with a little lisp or something like that. And a lot of times they say, well, they'll grow out of it. And, and they do. Most of the time, well, as they get bigger, it gradually smooths out and they, they talk better or they act better. But I, I know Christian people that have been saved 20, 30, 40 years, and you keep hoping they'll grow out of it, uh, uh, but never do. I, I was in, uh, in Marion, I was some pa- people's pastor 20 solid years. And after seeing them same people for 20 years, they did not know any more about doctrine or living right or the tricks of the devil than they did 15 years ago. Something wrong with that. There's something wrong with it. You ought to be smarter. You ought to be more mature. You ought to be... Uh, uh, you, you, I, I hear women a lot of times saying, boy, I'm telling you what, uh, uh, we're, you know, uh, I remember people used to shout all over the place. Yep, that was when you was young and the older women shouted. Now you are the older women. Amen. You are the older women. And uh, I've heard people say that, ain't you? Uh, you? It's your turn to shout. It's your turn to raise your hand and praise God and shout the victory and live right and serve God. So tonight, I just want to say a couple things about this tonight, and I want to say some marks of being spiritually immature. Babies, Christian. First of all, babies are extremely impatient. Babies, children, are impatient. They do not want to wait for nothing, and that is dangerous. I've, 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 I remember when my girls were little, especially uh, the middle one sitting over yonder tonight, and Corey, when, especially when them two were little, I remember them, they were so close together, the two little ones, that a lot of people thought they were twins. We, we'd go somewhere, and people say, oh, is that twins? But well, they were about the same size there for a while. And I remember at night, uh, I'd give them a bottle, and uh, back then, I don't know how y'all do it now, but we'd, we'd stick the bottle in the microwave and uh, heat it up. And I remember Corey, the oldest, uh, the youngest one, well, I had her in her crib, and I, I, they invented them little things that make a, the, like a little speaker, a little monitor, and you put one in the bedroom, put one on the baby's crib, and you can hear it. And I remember I'd be so tired at night, Lord have mercy. And I remember putting that thing in there, and I'd put her in her crib. And about maybe two or three o'clock in the morning, I'd hear, eh, 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 well, and I thought, oh, Lord, please, please, Lord, let her go back to sleep, God. And she went, wah, 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 wah. you know how it gradually gets away, and you keep thinking, and then finally, you know, they ain't going back to sleep. Uh, and, uh, and I remember, uh, this is awful, but I have put my pillow over my head, trying to drown it out, saying, I don't care, you ain't gonna kill her, let her holler a little while. I want to sleep. Uh, how many of y'all done that? No, that's awful, that's awful. Child abuse. Uh, but I remember, I'd finally get up and go down the steps. <laughs> I'd go down the steps, and I'd go in there and say, honey, honey I'll get you a bottle, just hold on just a second. And I'd uh, hold her in my arm, uh, go in there, get the bottle out of the refrigerator, stick it in her microwave, and she'd be going, ah, ah. I'd say, wait a second. She did not realize that you had to wait 40 seconds on that bottle to heat up. She thought, why can't I have it right now? That's the way babies are. That's the way babies think. That's the way babies feel. I don't understand why I can't have it right now. Uh, uh, Translated, I'd finally get it out and give it to her, and she'd she'd be all right for a while. Translated, I know people have a little marriage trouble. I have a little marriage trouble, and maybe the husband or the wife moves out for a while, and, and and for about a week and a half, two weeks, they're in the altar bawling, crying, bawling, crying, bawling, crying. Next time you see them, they ain't bawling, crying. They got them a boyfriend or a girlfriend. And I think, good night. They said, well, I waited two weeks. You're exactly like Corey was when she was one year old. I think you ought to be able to wait more than two weeks on your marriage. Somebody said, well, I waited and waited and she never came back. (laughs) Two weeks, two weeks, about two years. How about, listen, a lawyer told me one time, you know why you have to be separated a year in North Carolina to be divorced? And like in Georgia, down in Atlanta, it's like, uh, 90 days and in other town the more liberal the town is the less time you have to be separated to get a divorce because they don't have no Christian influence a lawyer, my lawyer told me years ago he said Danny I said uh, why is that law in North Carolina he said because of the strong 
Baptist influence. That's what he told me. He said the Baptist church puts such pressure on the government not to just give people divorce that a lot of people will reconcile and get back together during that year. And that is true. I've seen it happen many, many times where they get over their, what they're going through and get back together and make up. But people don't, you know how long you got to be separated in Las Vegas to get a divorce? 24 hours. And that shows our generation is like this. That's why old Britney Spears, Britney, Britney Spears went through that some other. You can get married one day and next, two days later be divorced and get you a big chunk of money. Uh, and you're the right fool. And uh, listen, buddy, I'm telling you tonight, people don't want to wait for nothing. That's why kids go to bed with each other before they get married. Can't wait. That's why they want, they want to grow up too fast. Can't wait. That's why you go down there and buy that brand new car you can't afford. Can't wait. That's why you buy that humongous house that you can't even pay for. Can't wait. I mean, listen, that's a, it's, a, it's a sign of immaturity to not be able to wait and wait and wait. You know what? What causes you to be able to wait is trouble. Patience, brother. You know how no patience, you ain't been through enough trouble. You go through enough trouble, you'll learn how to slow down and wait a little while. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Children are impatient. Number one, number two, babies, children are stingy. Babies are extremely stingy. It's hard to get them to share. Amen. Uh, like that one of the boys, they, they, these two little bitty boys about that high, they was trying to ride this little pony and they was pushing and one of them was pushing the other and one of them was pushing the other and he said, if one of us would get off here, I could ride better. And that's totally, that's exactly what I'm saying tonight. Uh, but it's me first, everybody else second. I want what I want and you have to fight yourself not to have that attitude. You know what our church needs? We need some people who are willing to say sacrifice. I'll make the sacrifice. I don't have to be first. I don't have to be in the spotlight. I don't have to get the praise. I don't have to get the glory. I'm willing just to serve, preacher. I'm willing to serve God. And do right. I've heard people say, well, uh, I, I used to work a bus way out, or I, I used to do this, but nobody appreciated me. Is that why you was doing it? That's the wrong reason to start with. Brother, I don't come up here and preach every Sunday because somebody, you know these times on Sunday morning when I preach my fool head off and soaking wet with sweat and throat hurting and not one person tells me they appreciated it. 300 people in here and not one. It hurts my feelings. I'm going to quit. Now, listen, I ain't quitting. If I have none of, I don't care if you say you hated it, I ain't quitting. You know why? Because I ain't doing it for you. I, amen. You got to make up your mind. Listen, you don't do it because you're appreciated. You don't do it because, I don't preach it. Well, they didn't give me a good love offering. You don't preach for a love offering. You preach for the Lord Jesus Christ that saved us from hell and honor him whether they like it or whether they don't like it. Where the prophet said, whether they hear or whether they forbear, uh, you preach anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, children are extremely stingy. You heard about that guy? Uh, they wanted, he won a trip to Hawaii for two and he went twice. That's that reminds me of see, I bet he's a Baptist. I, I, I bet he was a fine. He, he's probably a Sunday school teacher. Uh, listen, I'm telling you, brother, I, I know, I see it. Uh, I, don't, I don't have much of a social life uh, outside of church. I mean, church is my life. Uh, church in my life. I go to church all the time. I got to preach here tonight. I preach here Wednesday night. I preach Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night up in Kentucky. And then here Sunday morning, Sunday night. That gives me Monday and Tuesday to mow my grass. We're painting my house. We're doing all kind of stuff. And then I try to I play back. Me and Ethan will try to shoot basketball at night or go over there to the early ball. So basketball is really all I do except go to church and, uh, and work. We've been working. We've been working hard at my house. Me, Kelly, Miss B, Frankie, Marty, we all, we all been painting. Mar, uh, Frankie painted the driveway. Uh, and got a big spot on my forerunner. Uh, but uh, but we, we've been working. We've been working. And, uh, I, and playing ball, I see that human nature so much. Playing basketball. Grown men. Grown men. You know, when you, when you got a bunch of ball, a bunch of guys shooting like this right here, and... And, you know, if I'm shooting one ball and another ball bounces to me, you know, you hit it to the next guy. I see guys over there when another ball bounces to them, they grab it like that and shoot both of them instead of handing the guy beside you. That's selfish. That's being stingy. That's just a teeny tiny example. You see that in driving? We do it, I, you know, I don't do it in basketball because I've matured up. 
but I do it at Walmart because I'm always in a hurry and I push my buggy down through there and I'm looking and see there's two in this line and she got about half. I'm going to go over here and see. No, there's three. And I, go, and I see somebody coming and I go real fast trying to get in front of them. <laughs> Old woman coming down through there and I go flying. That's awful. I'm getting in the altar tonight and asking God to forgive me for that. But you know what I say? I've got an important job. I've got things to do. I can't wait on some old woman. That, that's a selfishness. That's stinginess. Amen. They're stingy. And don't you sit there and judge me if you don't pay your tithes and give extra money at camp meeting. I mean, you're stingier than I am. I'm glad to say tonight, brother, uh, we can grow out of that. We can grow out of that. We can grow out of that. Children play while other people do the work. People can fast, pay the bills, pay the parking lot, run the buses, and stingy people come in and say, ain't many here today, are they? Lord, have mercy. You ought to be an altar begging God, have mercy on you. That kind of sorry, stingy, selfish attitude. Number three, children get their feelings hurt real easy. Isn't that true? Least little thing. <laughs> They'll stick that lip out if they're embarrassed or if they're rebuked, if they don't get to sing, if you fuss at them. I preached before and didn't even have nobody in mind. And people got mad and say, he was just talking to me. And that never even crossed my mind. Now the truth is, I don't know what that is. I think it was an altoid. Uh, uh, the truth is, the truth is, if he is talking to you, if he's right and in the book, you ought to take it like a man and not be like a baby. Right. I mean, if I preach on something you're guilty of, God has preaching set up like this. So the preacher just gets up and just splatters it out and lets the chips fall where they will. That's very, very wise of God to do it that way. Wouldn't you hate it if my job was to come to your house every week and say, now listen, you've been doing this and you've been doing that and I think you need to, well, Lord have mercy, we wouldn't have 10 people in here. You say, I cannot believe he come over here and told me that I was doing wrong. So the Lord's got it fixed so that there ain't nobody necessarily, uh, you know, I, I'm just preaching and if it hits, shoot it. And you'd be surprised the people that still think, I know he just said that because of me. I know he just said that because of me. Well, he didn't, but if he did, that don't matter. The Bible said them that sin rebuke before all. And if a man takes this book and rebukes you, take it like a man. Take it like a grown-up. Man up. Just say, all right, he's right. I ain't arguing with the book. I ain't arguing with God, brother. If it's the book, I'll take it and, man, and try to move up a little bit. I'm not going to stick my lip out and call everybody saying, well, I don't know how you felt, but I just didn't like some of the things he said. That is a baby. That is a spiritual baby uh, that, that their feelings hurt and, and want to call her. I know a guy was playing ball. Uh, in Marion, a bunch of men, men, grown men. Most of them was over 30. And uh, we had a guy playing with us who was an attorney. Uh, done been to law school and got his, he was an attorney, you know, and everything. You know, and we chose up one night and they chose teams and there was about 12 there and he didn't get picked. He didn't get picked to play and walked, got mad and walked out of the gym and never came back to play ball. A 35 year old man. Now, you know, if a little kid's seven or eight years old and he don't get picked and gets his feelings hurt, I understand that. A 35-year-old man pouting and going home because he didn't get picked? What kind of generation is this? We're grown men, fellas. We're supposed to be grown-ups. We're not supposed to pout and gripe. And I'll just take my ball and go home. Lord, have mercy. We can't have an army of God with a bunch of men like that. You say, well, he overlooked me. You'll live. He said something that hurt my feeling, Brother Danny. I got slighted. Oh, get over it, man. That's good for you. It's good for you to be slighted once in a while. Good for you to get your feelings hurt. I get my feelings hurt every Sunday. You'll be all right. It's good for you. Keep you from getting too big for your britches. Amen? I mean, don't worry about your feelings, brother. Your feelings. Uh, your feelings. I've seen people get mad. I've seen this over and over and over. And say, well, I'm not quitting, but I'm just going to go. I'll sit on the back. 
I'll leave when it's over. I'm not speaking to nobody. You got wealth out there. You trip over it if you ain't careful going out. Mm. Number four, children demand their own way. If they can't be boss, they'll just quit. They want to do what they want to do when they want to do it. Everybody got to do their, their way. No, we're going to do it like this. No, 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 no. That's baby. That's the way babies act. That's the way babies act. Everybody can't be the boss. Everybody can't be the pastor. Everybody can't be the Sunday school teacher. Everybody can't be. Somebody has got to say, look, let's cooperate. Let's get together. Let's do this thing together. It ain't all. Did you know I'm the pastor of the church and things don't always go my way here? I'll tell you something else. I'll tell you something else. Listen, if everybody in this church, if everybody in this church said next Sunday, Brother Danny, there's some land for sale right over here, and I really think we ought to buy it. And I felt like we shouldn't. You know what I'd do? I'd say, all right, let's do it. You say, but don't you have the right as a pastor? Yeah, I do. But I don't trust myself against every one of y'all. If every one of y'all said, let's do this for God, preacher, what do you think? I, was like, huh? I don't know, but if, if that's what y'all want to do, I'll do it. Let's do it. I don't have to have my way all the time. There's something wrong with people that it always has to be their way. Something wrong with that. We ought to bend a little bit, cooperate a little bit. I'm talking about the tiniest little matters. The nursery, the Sunday school, the bus, the choir. You have to bend and bend a little bit. It can't always be my way or your way. Children demand their own way. Number five, children get all tore up over things they don't understand, over things they don't understand. They don't understand why mom and dad won't let them do this. Uh, some of you teenagers here, you might be, uh, your mom and dad will tell you things and you think, oh, why? Oh, she is so tough. I tell you what you better do. You better realize mama is and daddy pay the bills. Mama and daddy are taking care of me. Mama and daddy are telling me, uh, I, they don't know everything, but you don't know everything either. Amen. Lord, you sure don't. Some of y'all don't know much of nothing. I doubt if some of y'all could find your way to Hickory. Seriously, you get on the interstate going the wrong way. Children get all tore up over things they don't understand. I was, I was talking to people who just got right with the Lord, and uh, they said, now we got friends. They said, we got friends that come over on Friday night, and they bring beer. I said, whoa, 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 we're going to have to quit that. And, and they said, I know. They said, we know, we know. They said, last time I was over here, they said, our friends come over on Friday night, and one, he, a friend brought some beer, and he said, I'm going to bring some beer in. And he said, I told him, he said, I'm not going to drink that. And he said, why? And he said, I'm going to church now, and I'm not going to do that. And he said, the guy said, what has drinking beer got to do with going to church? <laughs> that's, that's the generation we're living in. You know, when I first got saved, when you was out visiting, I've walked in trailers before, old trailer parks, and there'd be old boys sitting in there drinking beer, and they'd say, hey, preacher, and they'd take that beer and set it down way over here behind the couch and hide it. And they knew it was wrong. Now we got Christians saying, what has drinking beer got to do with going to church? Well, duh, you little baby, it's got a lot to do with it. That's the generation we're living in. You don't understand. I mean, uh, Crystal, want to, she want a pencil, want to play with a pencil. You know, when they're two years old, let me have that pencil. Every kid likes to play with a pencil, right? Now, why don't you let them, they'll stick it in their mouth or in their eye and in their sister's eye uh, or something, it's going to wind up getting, they're going to wind up getting hurt on it. I got lead in my hand right there, a piece of lead. Somebody stabbed me with a pencil in school and it's still in there. You can see it right there. And them things are dangerous, but they don't understand it. That's some Frankie, <laughs> Frankie is, is so funny in some things. I don't know where this come from, but you can, you'll have to guess. Um, I, was, I was getting ready. Ain't that right, Frank? You listening to me? I'm talking about you. Stand up and listen. 
I was getting, doing something in the, in the bathroom, and he got out that little thing. You know that little brush that you clean? Come up, it goes in little things about that big, and you're supposed to clean it. Well, he got that thing, and he was just sticking it down in the, in the toilet. And I said, no, Frankie, don't do that. He, for some reason, everything he gets hold of, he wants to go in there and throw it in the toilet. And he threw something, you know I mean? He'll throw the brush, hair dryer, anything he can get a hold of, and throw it in there, won't you, Frank? Fun, ain't it? <laughs> Say, hey, Dada. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, he throws everything in there. So I go down and say, no, Frankie, let's do that. And I pulled him back, and I flushed the commode, and he stands over the commode and says, bye-bye, bye-bye. That's <laughs> a... <laughs> and he's done that more than once. Who taught him to say bye-bye? <laughs> Somebody taught him when you flush the commode to say bye-bye. <laughs> and that's what you do, ain't it, Frank? Ain't it? That's what you do when you flush it. You say, you say bye-bye because he's just a little prankster. <laughs> he's just a little prankster. Nobody loves him. Nobody loves him. He's just a little prankster. But you know what? Some of y'all, some of y'all need to learn how to say bye-bye and flush some things. That's an awful illustration. But every time you flush, bye-bye. <laughs> Good riddance. Uh, glad you're gone. Now look, you better learn how to do that. You better learn how to do that. Wait, Frank. Wait. Wait just a minute. Listen. Children get all tore up over things they can't understand. Now, let me give you another right quick, and we're going to be done. A couple more right quick. If you, if you feel a little guilt here, say, Lord, help me to grow up. Help me to grow up. Right. Next, kill, children cannot handle responsibility. That's why we don't put Frankie behind the wheel of that forerunner and say, all right, Frank, you drive us home tonight. They don't handle responsibility. There's some people... You can't put in charge of a Sunday school class. You can't put in charge of, of a job at home. They're, they're spiritually immature. I mean, you don't take a little kid that little and say, all right, now, y'all, y'all mow the grass while we're gone and, and uh, go pay the bills downtown. They can't handle responsibility. And it's a sad Shame that people been in church all their life. All their life. And can't handle no kind of spiritual responsibility. Amen. That's right. Number seven. Children don't like to eat what's good for them. They'll eat candy from daylight to dark if you let them. You try to feed them something that's good for them. Mm. Mm. I've seen them, My, mine's done it, yours has done it. Um, I'm not hungry, I'm not hungry. Well, we got ice cream today. I want ice cream. You know why? Because babies normally like what's sweet and tastes good and don't like to eat what's good for them. We are living in a generation of Christian people that do not want doctrine. They do not want anything that's controversial. They don't want, they don't want broccoli and, and meat and strong meat and the good things of God that will root them and ground them. They, oh, no, 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 no. Just, just tell me God's awesome, man. Just tell me God's awesome. That's all I want to hear. No, you can't live off M&Ms. You've got to have some meat. You've got to have some doctrine. You've got to know why you believe the Bible. You got to know what's right. You got to know about the second coming. You have to know about the past. You have to know about premillennial doctrine. You have to know some stuff to be a mature Christian. All people know nowadays is you're so awesome. God really made you wonderful. You're just awesome and he's just madly in love with you. That is the, that's sickening to hear somebody talk like that. God is not madly in love with you. Read your Bible and turn your soap operas off. Grow up a little bit and, and talk like the Bible talks. The Bible said God so loved, past tense, the world. He gave his son. Listen, God loved you enough to give his son to die for your sins and he ain't madly in love with what you are right now without the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said he's angry with the wicked every day. What he said, 
But see, children can't handle that. They can't, mm, mm, mm. I want candy. I want candy. I'm awesome, ain't I? I tell me I'm awesome. I ain't telling you you're awesome because you ain't. Don't like to eat what's good for them. You know what Carrie used to say when she was little? It's been a long time since I told this on her. I'd say, Carrie, need to eat. And she'd say, takes too long. <laughs> and that's what I do now. <laughs> I do that now. That's why I like to go to a buffet. I can get my food and have it almost high feet. I may take your order sitting down there at that other place. Takes too long. Finally, I'm through. Children, for the most part, don't like to take a bath. <laughs> now, you run a weird kid once in a while that likes to take baths. But most kids, you have to make them take a bath. When we were growing up, I mean, we didn't have a shower. We had a bathtub. How many of you grew up? With a bathtub, not a shower. Raise your hand, please. Okay, I have five people in here. And Lord, I remember when, when I first, first time I ever took a shower was in a motel when we was going up to West Virginia to see McKinn folks. And I thought, my goodness, it's like you're out in the rain. I don't know how this gets you clean. <laughs> and uh, this is awful, but the way people used to do it, mom would run the bath water and the brother would get in there, then the next brother would get in there. You better hope you was first or at least second because by the time it was three or four, stuff's floating on, the, on top. And it's like, like sort of gray and it's a, a, skin, a film with little hair in it and stuff. It's floating on top of the water. And uh, I, I ain't gonna ask you to raise your hand. How many of you ever had to take a bath in dirty bath water? Children don't like to take a bath. Now the Bible said you're clean through the word which I've spoken unto you. By the washing of the water by the word. You know what I'm doing to you tonight? I'm just spraying you off, cleaning you up a little bit. You know what I did this morning? I took the word of God and cleaned you. You read the Bible enough, it'll clean your insides out. It'll wash you on the inside. It'll cleanse you. Clean, you know, you're clean through the word which I've spoken to you. People say, well, how come I have such dirty thoughts? Get in the word. Get your heart clean. Get your heart clean. Get, stay out of the mud. Stay out of the mud. Stay out of the dirt of this world. Get the word of God in you. You read about 20 chapters a day this week and see if you don't have a cleaner mind this time next week. But children don't like to take a bath. Like Spanky. Remember when Spanky had to take a bath? <laughs> he had to take a bath and then uh, you, you poor ignorant kids nowadays don't even get to watch the little rascals. Pitiful, pitiful. Not that new junk they come out with. That ain't the little rascals. Them old ones. Them was the good ones. And Spanky's mom say, Spanky, you go in there and take a bath. And he'd go in there and he'd turn the water on and go, <laughs> and he wasn't doing nothing. And then finally he'd take that rag and put it here and, get, and then make a noise. <laughs> uh, trying to clean his ears. I never did try to clean my ears when I was little. I don't think my ears ever got washed when I was grown. Mom might probably did it a time or two, but like your belly button or something, you're supposed to clean it out. Whew, that's rough on some people. Uh, but uh, you're supposed to take Get you a drumstick or something, put a cotton ball on it. Uh, but but I'm, that's awful. That's awful. But listen, people, you're supposed to, you're supposed to clean every area of your life, uh, your heart, your mind, your thought. Be, be careful, little feet, where you go. Be careful, little hands, what you do. Be careful, little ears, what you hear. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Uh, you're clean through the word, which I've spoken to you. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. I used to never wash my hands. And preacher, I go visiting with these preachers. I said, now, Danny, learn this in the ministry. An old preacher took me visit. He said, uh, he said, when you come out of a hospital, wash your hand because there's germs in there. Uh-oh, Frank. Get him, Ethan. And uh, he said, uh, he said, wash your hands when you come out of the hospital. Come on, Frank. Take him out. Get out of here. Uh, but anyway, 
I finally got now to where I come out of every hospital room. There's one of them things there on the wall where you where you push it and it stuff. That's the stinkingest stuff I ever smelled in my life. I don't know what it is. That stuff stinks, man. I don't know what it is, but it's, it smells worse than my hands did. And that's supposed to kill germs and stuff. And you, you wipe it off like that. Listen, every day of your life, and I'm through. Every day of your life, wash your hands. Wash your mind. Wash your heart. Take a bath every day. People didn't used to take a bath every day. My mom, my mom had a very, 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 very thick head of hair. Now, I got a lot of hair now for my age, but you get that from your mother's daddy. You get your hair from your mother's daddy or lack thereof from your mother's daddy. If you got a lot of hair here, you ain't got none here. If you got a lot of hair here, you ain't got none here. So win-lose. But my mom's hair was really, really thick. She couldn't hardly get a brush through it. She, I had to, she had to jerk a brush to get it through her hair. It's so thick. And she wouldn't wash it for a week or two. And that's what they always did. Didn't think nothing about it. But now, uh, you gotta wash. You gotta wash regular. That's where your heart is. You gotta wash it regular. Whatever I've said tonight, where you thought, "Uh oh, that sound, that could be me. That could be me." That's what the Lord spoke to you about tonight, and He wants you to work on. Now stand by our head for prayer. Church babies, I don't want to be a church baby. I won't be one. I won't be mature. As a man, man up and be a man. She's playing softly tonight. Just heads bowed and eyes closed. If you want to slide here in the altar tonight, we'll pray and then we'll have our meeting. Heavenly Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I pray that you bless our church. Help us, Lord, to be mature, not church babies. Not pout, not whine, not gripe, not wear our feelings on our shoulders, not pout for weeks and months and even years. Grow up, serve you, and do right. Have you in our heart tonight? God bless every single person here this evening. Bless all these kids, bless all these parents. Help every one of us, starting with me right here in this pulpit, to be a mature child of God as strong meat and not milk well thank you for it and we love you in Jesus name we pray and for his sake amen amen